so one of the most frequent questions I get as a digital sculptor is that what device do we need to start sculpting with? Can we start with a mouse and keyboard or do we need like a really good tablet to start sculpting? Also a lot of people want to know if it's worth it to upgrade from a cheap tablet to a more expensive display tablet. We're gonna go over all of the possible options in this video from mouse and keyboard to actual display tablets to see which one suits you best in your price budget. Timestamps are in the video so if you're bored already skip to the parts where you're interested interested in, starting from mouse and keyboard. Believe it or not, you can actually start sculpting with it. You just need to follow these simple instructions. First step would be But seriously, it is possible to sculpt using a mouse, but it comes with so much limitation that makes it almost unusable. Yeah, you can use it for more simple tools, tools that don't rely too much on pressure sensitivity, like a grab tool for example. But when it comes to the most important brushes like clay strip brush, that's when it becomes basically useless. You can't continuously add clay over and over, and the lack of pressure sensitivity makes it impossible to control the amount of clay you want to add. That's because there's only two inputs for the mouse. Not clicking would be a strength 0 and clicking would be a strength 1. There's literally nothing in between. So yeah, I would just stick to the normal modeling for mouse and keyboard. Now let's move on to the real stuff. Budget tablets. For the budget tablets, we got like thousand options from different brands. These are mostly under 50 bucks. For example, you can get this Huion tablet as cheap as 29 bucks and it has like 8000 pressure sensitivity, which is great considering the price. So what are the pros and cons? Let's go over the pros first. Longevity. For example, I have this really old Intus tablet. I've been using it for more than 8 years and it still works like day one. Although I've been using it for a long time, it still hasn't run out of the first tip and it has a bunch of other tips in case you run out of the first one. I assume the newer models are just as good, if not better, and also they have improved the pressure sensitivity since then. Next one would be connectivity. Good thing about these tablets is that they're power efficient. They will operate using only a USB cable. Just connect it to a device using a normal USB cable and you're good to go. Doesn't matter if it's Windows, Android or whatever. It will work just fine when you install the driver. Unlike display tablets where you need more stuff which I'm gonna explain later. Another thing that's even better than the display tablets in my opinion is that you have access to a bigger screen. You see, this is your input area. No matter if you get the small size tablet or the big one, it projects that area into any type of monitor you have, no matter the size. It even works on my 29 inch ultra wide monitor, which has an unusual 21 by 9 aspect ratio and it supports the full screen. So if you have a large monitor and it happens to have a really good panel, you're gonna have the best experience. Unlike most display tablets, most of the cheap ones have low quality panels, even worse than a cheap IPS monitor. So it's a nice thing to have. Next one would be latency and delay. Best part about these tablets are the low latency. The delay between you brushing the pen over the surface and seeing it getting registered on the monitor is so low that you don't even notice it. Now the worst thing about these tablets with no screen is the time that it takes to get used to. When you first start using it, it's really hard to get something done. But it gets better and better after a few weeks. But something you won't ever get used to is making a straight line. For example, if you want to sculpt a line around an edge, you most likely can't sculpt in one go. You have to enable stabilize a stroke in Blender or lazy mouse in ZBrush to make it easier. And even then, you'll definitely need to try a bunch of times to get it right. Now let's move on to the display tablets. As you can see, when you switch to the tablets that has a screen, prices pumps up instantly. As I said in the beginning, I've been using that old Intus tablet and recently was thinking of upgrading to a tablet with a screen. But some of these are really expensive. I mean I would understand the pricing if it had like a 27 inch beautiful OLED screen but it does not. Then I looked at some of the Huion products which has pretty good prices considering the specs and fortunately timing was right. Huion reached out to send me this canvas turning pro. You can get it for like 390 bucks on Amazon. I'm gonna tell you all about it for you to see how much stuff you get in this price point. First of all you get a nice looking 13.3 inch tablet with bunch of customizable buttons on the side. Just look how good it looks. We got some type C cables and extenders to extend the length of the cables. A nice two finger glove as expected so your hand slides on the screen like butter. A stand is also included unlike some of the other tablets that you have to pay like 40 bucks for it separately. And it's really solid and holds the tablet pretty good on the table without a slipping. We got the pen holder which has some goodies inside. I'll show you. Some instruction we don't need and finally the glorious pen which is the new Huion Pentec 3. It fits really good in hand 
and it has two customizable buttons on the side, which is nicely placed and easily reachable, unlike some of the pens I've used where the buttons are sometimes too high. Now if you screw the pen holder open, we're greeted by 10 additional tips, which 5 of them are kind of paper-like and has a different texture to it. Pretty cool. Now if you screw it back in, we can lay down the pen like this, or just insert it in and it holds it. We got a nice bright and colorful QLED display with 2.5K resolution, which is more than enough for a 13 inch display. When it comes to the actual pen, it's really good. It has a high pressure sensitivity, even the smallest pressure gets registered and you can draw and sculpt without any issues. I really like the pen, I think it's great. Thanks again to Huion for supporting this video. Now back to pros and cons of these tablets. The first pro is obviously having a display. This makes things much easier. Not only it's way more satisfying to work with, especially in sculpting, and since we're drawn on a paper since our childhood, you'll get used to these tablets almost instantly. You just have to customize the buttons to your liking. I set the bottom button as the middle mouse. That way I can easily rotate the camera in Blender. Next pro would be the previous tablet's con, which is drawing straight lines. Now since you have a screen underneath the pen, it's really easy to just make a straight line without any issues. You might still need a bit of a smoothing to avoid shaking, but it's still way easier than the tablets with no screen. Another point for the display tablets are having extra screen. When you're using one of these, you're most likely sitting in front of a monitor. You can use that monitor to show you the same screen as what you're sculpting, but it would be useless. Instead, you can go to display settings in Windows and choose extend these displays. Now you can draw or sculpt on the tablet and use the monitor for browsing on Pinterest, having lots of reference images or even Spotify, whatever. Now the only major con that comes with these tablets is the mobility. For these tablets, we got a USB cable that connects the tablet to the computer. We also got a HDMI cable that transfers the screen from computer over onto the tablet. And lastly, we have an adapter that is necessary only if your PC doesn't provide enough power to turn it on. These cables makes it a bit hard to move around. Unlike the cheap tablets, where they're really lightweight and portable. Not to mention, you have to have an extra HDMI port on your GPU. That means if you're using a PC with onboard GPU that doesn't have any graphics card installed, you have to constantly remove your monitor and connect the tablet every time, because you only have one port. But luckily, most of us have a GPU that comes with at least one more HDMI port in the back. Yeah, I think we covered the most important parts of each device. Hope it answers at least some of the questions. Make sure to check out the channel for more sculpting and character creation tutorials. Also, there's a lot of good stuff on my Gumroad and Patreon page including hours of character creation process videos, 3D files, free hair system, etc. Go ahead and check out the link in the description to download it. I hope I'll see you on the next one. Peace.